beach. It was re- I love it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, this will be my first time. I've never been to one, so I'm pretty oh, excited. Fun. Fun. Yeah. Hey, we're on the we're on the TV. Hope he's got us out. All right. I think it's uh, I, Mr. McCarthy, you here, Mr. Mr. Uh, Ms. Callan, you here? It's, it's Mr. Bria and Mr. Uh, Paul, Paul here too as well. Thank you, Mr. Bria. Uh, George is here. Yes. George is here. Yes, I'm here. All right. All right, everyone. We're, we're gonna we're gonna start the meeting. Um, good evening. Welcome to the City of Los Joint Board of Appeals. Um, public hearing for September September twenty eighth. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the meeting will not occur in person, and we are all meeting virtually uh, via phone or Zoom uh, through our smart devices. Um, but we'll get into continued business. Um, ZB-2020-32, uh, the petition of variance out in Pennsylvania, uh, care of Staff 27 LLC. Uh, the property located at 62 Seneca Street, 32 Chippewa Street. Um, the petition is seeking variance approvals to relocate the lot lines and construct a new single family home at 33 Chippewa Street, Lot B, a vacant lot that has merged for the purpose of zoning with the existing family home at 62 Seneca Street, Lot A. The properties are in the traditional neighborhood two-family zoning district, and the proposal requires variance approval under section 5.1 for minimum lot size and minimum lot area per dwelling unit for both lots, minimum lot frontage for lot B, minimum front yard setback for the existing home in lot A, and for any other relief required of the low zone units. Uh, good, good evening, Ms. Alenia. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, I apologize, uh, members of the commission. Uh, Ken Lania, Cornerstone Land Consultants, representing the applicant JAF 27 LLC. Uh, we're before you this evening, as you had stated, to uh, request the variances to allow for the uh, separation of the single family lot that's located at 62 Seneca and 33 Chippewa uh, to allow us to create an additional single family lot shown as lot B on the proposed site plan before you. Uh, this is a continued hearing. So at the last hearing, there was, uh, you know, some inf insufficient information regarding the building uh, plans for each lot. Uh, we've since provided the proposed structure uh, for lot B, as well as an interior drawing showing the makeup of the existing dwelling at 62 Seneca. Um, in addition to that, just some of the uh, high points that uh, wanted to outline was the creation of the lot with the driveway as suggested by DPD to relocate that to the side of the structure uh, to allow for that front uh, view to be acceptable as the rest of the neighborhood uh, going around McQuiggan. Um, the existing dwelling again was uh, going to be kept as is. I know there was a concern on Mr. McCarthy's part as to what was happening with that particular structure. Uh, there's no intention from the current owner to raise the roof of that structure. Uh, as you can see, it is a three bedroom, single family, uh, one and a half story structure. Mm -hmm. It does have a uh, living room, kitchen, three bedrooms. It does have access to an attic area that is currently unfinished, as well as a basement area that is unfinished. Uh, both structures would uh, have the requisite required parking. And uh, again, as one of the comments issued by DPD, we would be providing some additional landscaping on this parcel for the removal of some mature trees on the actual existing lot. And I've shown those on the site plan. Uh, if there are any additional questions at this time regarding this proposal, I'd be glad to answer them. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Lenny, for, for your update. Um, now we're gonna open up to the public hearing of the meeting. Um, anyone wishing to speak in favor of this petition? 
in favor? In favor? Hearing mm -hmm. none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Any motion to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition? Hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Um, we're going to open up to the board. Um, the chair recognizes Mr. McCarthy. McCarthy, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, I'd like to ask, I'm, I'm glad to see the plan. The plans look um, consistent with what we were expecting, what I was expecting. Um, the um, plan of the existing property that has the uh, three bedroom, uh, living room, kitchen, you know, kitchen area, um, has a stair to an attic that has currently, I think, some dormer windows. And your intent is not to put bedrooms up there. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. At this time, there's no intention. So, Mr. McCarthy, this is a uh, concrete block structure. Um, I tried to take some pictures and attach them with the email that sent over, but it didn't go over. But ultimately, um, I'm going to try to equate it. Um, in the attic area, there is uh, turnbuckles every, let's call them 16 inches or so that are approximately 18 inches off the floor. So without some fairly decent uh, modification to that attic area, it would not be possible to make that area a live-in space. Okay. But all I wanted to know is that we're not turning that into a living space. And I heard you use the word attic, and I just wanted to reinforce the fact that we have only three bedrooms in that structure. So that, that sounds terrific. Um, mm -hmm. In the comments from uh, DPD, um, they noted that you did not provide anything to um, help us understand how stormwater is going to be resolved on the site. Um, yeah, so with the single family homes and the small amount of pavement that we're adding, uh, Mr. McCarthy, um, stormwater should not be an issue in that particular location. Uh, the driveway for lot B will actually be draining onto um, lot A's property, um, but ultimately the overflow from that small amount of impervious would enter into the street drainage. Um, but I don't see very much impervious area stormwater flow uh, entering into the roadway from this particular site. It is primarily flat. I agree with you. Um... Fran, I, I'm not sure who um, was the author of the comments here for the stormwater, but uh, are there concerns um, in that area with soil types or something that would lead us to believe that we have to do additional drainage structures to mitigate any stormwater problems? Or do you, do you um, know that? The author of the stormwater comments are the stormwater team. So if they had concerns, they would express them. You see them reflected in the comment below. They're not from Jared or either from the engineers. Hmm. Well, I was just wondering, should we make a condition that you satisfy the stormwater team's requirements as part of the granting of the variance? Mr. Uh, McCarthy, I, I'd be fine with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. Okay. Okay. I think I think it would be wise for us to do that just because you don't really have a a drainage, you know, design presented. So since the mm -hmm. team did kind of mention it as something that seems to be unresolved, we should probably make a condition that you satisfy the requirements of the stormwater team of this DPD that um, um, any water drainage systems for the lot, is it lot D? A lot, lot two? Lot D. Lot yep, lot D. Okay. Let the, yeah, and and yeah. they might they might know something, Mr. McCarthy, that we don't about that drainage system. So I don't have a problem coordinating with them, and if need be, we can put in a dry well to collect. Okay. Um, other than that, I think you satisfied their condition already with the um, shade trees. You've identified them um, as far as the caliper size and them being native shade trees. Um, uh, so I don't think we need a condition there. And I was happy to see the rendering, which looks quite um, quite nice for that, that location. So I'm glad to see that there's a substantial structure being put there. So 
I'm happy with what um, you provided. Mm -hmm. And um, I think with just that one condition, I would be happy to go forward here. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Um, just just a just a reminder for the public hearing. If if you're not speaking, please uh, mute your device or phone, um, so other people can uh, make sure they hear and listen. All right, uh, going forward to the board uh, part of the discussion and questions, um, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Breer. Mr. Breer, the floor is yours, sir. Mark Breer speaking. As I've indicated uh, previously, Mr. Chairman, I uh, look forward to this particular project. I look upon it very favorably and will vote in support. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Breer. Um, the, the chair recognizes Mr. Prokop. Mr. Prokop, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, I, I don't have any questions. I think it's been satisfied. Um, as I mentioned, I've looked at the property several times. I think it would be a good project for the neighborhood, and I, I will be voting uh, for this project. Thank, thank you, Mr. Prokop. Uh, the chair recognizes Mr. Callian. Mr. Callian, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, thank you again, Ms. Lania, for providing the updated uh, renderings of the flow plans, because that really helps out uh, as a project. Uh, I think I had a question last time I'm trying to recall. There's a big tree in the back of the plot A. Um, what was you mentioned? That, that one's going to be removed. That one's going to be removed. Yeah, so Mr. Callahan, that tree, which I think is actually on a chip roll loss, it's on the right hand side by the yes. existing driveway for <laughs> lot A. There's no plan to remove that tree at all. It will remain as existing. The only oh. two larger trees that are mature are on lot B, centrally located, more actually towards the Seneca Street side. Those would be the only two trees that will be removed for the uh, development of this proposed lot. Okay. No, I saw the updated site plan. I didn't see that uh, that, tree, that, that large tree in the back identified. So um, I guess we can see it's that as well. <laughs> And, and, and I'm comfortable with the condition, Mr. Callahan, that says that we'll leave that tree there. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Um, so what, the other question I had, I'm looking at the site plan, it just caught my eye. I see that the driveway, the intention is for the driveway on Chippewa Street, back on Chippewa Street, to go all the way to the lot line. So? Um, on the right hand side? No, it yeah. should not go to the, no, there's a three foot setback that should be there. Yeah, that driveway should meet the setbacks for the property line. Um, as well as tour development. Okay. Okay. So, all right. It says existing. Actually, actually, it says existing. Uh, so okay. that's that's just that's just way. I, okay, I got confused there. It's like an existing driveway, but the intention obviously is not to extend the driveway to the lot. Yep. Yep. So that existing driveway will remain exactly the same. We, so pretty much the existing house, the existing tree, the lots on that Chippewa side with the, obviously the dwelling has a Seneca Street address, but that should all, will all remain the same. It will be broken off. The only intention of the current owner is to really, you know, I hate to use the term fluff and buff, but really just to get inside there, you know, upgrade the interior, obviously repaint and clean up the roof on the exterior and really make that readily available. It's a, it's, a, it's in real good condition. I've been in the house. Uh, it's got strong bones. It's all CMU block uh, constructed. So uh, that house will last long long beyond our, our time on this earth. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, it's my old childhood neighborhood, so I'm, I'm aware of the area. I'm aware of the house. Uh, nice C-block house, but it's in disarray. And it's been in disarray for a while. It's pretty good to see uh, going in and rehabbing. Um, so yeah, thanks again for the updated plans. I had no, I had no issues with the one previously, but it's good to have more information. Uh, we know and that uh, you're going through those conditions right now. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. We lose Dan. 
not sure. Um, I'm not sure if he's on. I don't see his name. I think his phone number is the one ending seven six six. Seven six six. Seven six six. Okay. I requested to unmute him, so. Ben, are you there? Uh, you want to do from here? Does anyone have his phone number by any chance? Uh, let me grab my cell phone real quick, find out. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sean, can they unmute me? Dan just text me. Did you unmute him? So it says ask to unmute. Um, so I I think the easiest way would be if he disconnects and then redials back in. That would be the most straightforward way. Okay, let me text him right now. One is the modern technology. <laughs> <laughs> Patience is a good thing. All right, the fan said you should probably disconnect and call back in. So he's disconnected, but I think he's probably in the process of calling back in. Uh, hello, this is Van. Can, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry for the technical difficulty here, but I, I did hear all all that your comments from Callan and everything. Uh, so thank thanks for your comments from Callahan. Miss um, Lania, thank thank you for your application and this. Of the updated plans, it is appreciated. Um, you heard the wish of the board. Uh, do you wish to move forward with the vote with the following condition around stormwater drainage? Uh, yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Uh, hearing that, can Ms. can we have a motion uh, on on the variance, please? No, just uh, go over the conditions again, Mr. Lania. Uh, first condition is that you are to satisfy the requirements of the stormwater team with regards to the drainage system. And the uh, second one is the large tree and the back of lot A is green. Absolutely, yes, sir. So with that uh, three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on DB 2020-32 or 62 Seneca Street, 33 Chippewa Street for variance approval under section 5.1 uh, for both lots, the minimum lot size and minimum lot area for dwelling unit. 62 Seneca Street for minimum lot frontage, the 33 Chippewa Street for minimum Google lot size and that. To relocate the lot line to construct a new single family residence on the to building. The meeting four different ways. 33 Chippewa. Uh, can, can we have a second to that motion, please? Mom, please, second to the motion. All right, second by Mr. Breer. Can we have a roll call, please? Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, approve the condition. Member Callahan. 
Approve with conditions. Member McCarthy. Approve with conditions. Member Briere. Approve with conditions. Member Proco. Approve with conditions. All right, Ms. Elena, um, you've been approved with conditions. Congratulations. Um, we're going to take the agenda out of order now. Um, we're going to go into the new business. Um, again, could I just ask a quick question? Could you repeat the second um, condition? The first was the stormwater team, and then the second was? Large tree in the back of lot A is to remain. The screening? Large tree. tree. Oh, large tree. tree. Got okay. leaves. Great. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you everyone for that. Um, so now we're gonna take the, the other agenda out of order, uh, Ms. Delania, um, you have a petition under new business, uh, one for 61 to 69 Rock Street. Um, the petition is seeking rent rules to construct six residential units, uh, 61 to 69 Rock Street, the property is in the urban neighborhood multifamily zoning district. And the use requires variance approval under section 5.1. The deck proposed to encroach on the side yard setback under section 6.1.4 for off seat parking requirements and for all other relief required of the low zone ordinance. Um, the applicant has requested a continuance to the October 15, 2020 meeting. Um, is there anything else you want to add to that, Ms. Lania? Um, yeah, Mr. Vice Chair, yeah, we, we had uh, already reviewed this project with the Lowell Planning Board uh, received approval. We're coming forward with this uh, application to the board just to ensure that we make sure we meet the parking requirements. Uh, there was a little um, miscommunication between myself and my client for the advertising, so I apologize. And uh, we need to re-advertise in the sun for this particular meeting, so uh, that is the reason for the continuance. And uh, sorry for any uh, miss or any inconvenience this may have caused. Oh, thank, thank you, Ms. Lania. Thank you for trying to do the right thing. So it's very much appreciated, sir. Um, hearing no other comments, um, can I have a motion to continue I, the I, matter? Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I, could just, if I could just interject a comment, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll strike that. So uh, we have one comment. So, Mr. Chairman, I mean, um, Mr. McCarthy, the floor is yours. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, I, I went by the site and did not see the um, notice posted. Um, and so I'm not sure if it was removed, but it would be, I think a good idea just to have that reposted since we do have time between now and the next hearing. Yeah, Mr. McCarthy, that, that actually, I, I took that sign down prior to the last meeting um, and I apologize. So my plan is I return back from Nashville on Wednesday the sign will be re-erected on Wednesday, as well as the appropriate notification of the about is of the updated continued hearing will also go out on Wednesday. Very good, thank you. All right, thank, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Any any other comments or anything from the board before we move on to the matter to continue it? All right, hearing none, um, can we have a motion to continue the matter to October 15th? Agree, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on DB 2020-38 to 61 to 69 Rock Street to continue the public public hearing on this matter to October 15th. Can we have a second, please? Yes, three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second the motion. All right, uh, motion by Mr. Callan to, to continue the matter. Um, second by Mr. McCarthy. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Chairman Peck. Uh, approved continuance. Member October Callahan. 15. Approved continuance to October 15th, 2020. Member McCarthy. Approved continuance to October 15th. Member Briere. Approved continuance. Member Proko. Approved continuance to October 15th. All right. All right. Uh, Ms. Lena, you've been continued on the matter to October 15th. Um, again, uh, taking the agenda out of order. Uh, DB-2020-39 and variants. Uh, the applicant is Tablania, care of Mad Jack 7 LLC, probably located at 38 Clifton Street. Um, Mad Jack 7 LLC seeking variance approval to subdivide 
the existing lot with an existing two-family home and construct a new single-family home on the new lot. The property is in the traditional two-family zoning district. The proposal requires variance approval under Section 5.1 for the minimum lot area per dwelling unit, minimum frontage, and for any other relief required of the low zone ordinance. Um, the applicant has requested a zoning requested a continuance to the October 15th CBA meeting. Um, anything else you want to add to that, Mr. Lanier? Uh, no, Mr. Vice Chair, this is again uh, uh, my error on the advertisement. And uh, as I had stated for the previous hearing, the advertisement will be completed um, for the upcoming two uh, Lowell Sun weeks. And in addition to that, a sign will be erected and the notification of the abutters will be done on Wednesday when I return. Uh, great, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Lenny, for all your due diligence. Um, and any comments for, from the board before we move on to, to voting the continuous on the matter? All right, hearing none, um, can we have a motion to continue the matter to uh, October 15th meeting? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on ZB 2020-39 for 38 Clifton Street to continue this matter to October 15th. Is there, can we have a second on the on the motion, please? Apple yes, seconds the motion. Thank, thank you, Mr. Breer. Motion by Mr. Callahan to continue the matter. Um, second by Mr. Breer. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Uh, Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, approved continuance to October 15th, 2020. Member Callahan. Approved continuance to October 15th, 2020. Member McCarthy. Approved continuance to October 15th. Member Briere. Approved continuance. Member Procope. Approved continuance to October 15th. All right, you, you've been approved to uh, continue the matter to October 15th. Uh, we'll see you in October, Ms. Melania. Excellent. I appreciate that, Mr. Vice Chair. All right, Mr. Vice Chair, I, I, I believe yeah, I have that ahead. one last item, if we could, for that extension, if possible. Just refresh my memory, Ms. Lania, which, which uh, that was, request is it? Yep, that's 157 Bill Ricca. Okay. And uh, All I right. believe you guys have previously approved that. And um, we're looking to see if we can extend that this evening, Mr. Vice Chair. He has to go to Lowell Court of Appeal. All right, so we're, we're going to move into other business, the extension request at 157 Bill Ricca. Our project. The applicant, agenda, then he can get on. the applicant is seeking a one-year extension of the variance approval issued at the September 9, 2019 DB meeting for 167 Bill Worker Street. The applicant received variance, variance approval under Section 5.1 to construct three residential townhouse dwellings with associated parking. Uh, Ms. Laney, is there any um, anything you want to share with the board in terms of the extension request? Uh, Yes, Mr. Vice Chair, I just wanted to let the board know uh, that we've been actively working with National Grid. Uh, there's been some discrepancy concerns with the location of the easement. Uh, we feel as though through our survey team that we had the uh, easement area locked down and located on the plan in an appropriate manner so that we could come before the board and uh, request the variances that you uh, granted. Um, after approval and moving forward with construction, uh, we've had some back and forth with National Grid as they're not agreeing to the location of that uh, easement area. Um, we're currently trying to complete the uh, workout of the actual location, um, which in my opinion is not going to affect the variances that the board had already issued. Um, but at this point, without their final approval, allowing us to obtain a building permit, uh, we're asking for the request of the extension in order to uh, hold our variances um, once the national grid approval is obtained. Okay, thank, thank you for your um, summary of the extension request, uh, Ms. Alenia. 
Um, so, so right now we're going to open up to the, the public uh, hearing portion uh, for this petition. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? In favor? In favor? Hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition? Hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Uh, we're going to open up uh, comments, questions to the board. Um, Chair recognizes Mr. Callahan. Mr. Callahan, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I generally don't have an objection to the extension. I guess my only one question I normally would like to point out on uh, extensions is like when there's usually conditions involved, what are the status of these conditions uh, on the request? I think there's only one condition. Applicant. Applicants shall submit a new set of renderings with a title of R. Mr. Callan, I'm sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't hear your entire question. Um, if you could oh, repeat that, I, I, that would be great. Yep. No problem. Yep, there was one condition when this was granted back in October of 2019. Okay. Uh, applicants shall submit the new set of pilot renderings with a title bar and stamp. I mean, because this is an extension, I usually just like to check in on what the status, um, what the status or conditions are. Mr. Callan, I, I apologize. I wasn't involved with the initial application request, um, so I was not aware of that condition, but I can tell you that, that I'm currently involved with the project, and I will ensure that that condition gets cleared up long before we request any uh, building permits for the project. Yeah, if I recall, I thought, I, and I see Mr. Hammer on the uh, on the list of speakers, I think he was involved. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Matt Hammer, Lamplex. How are you, Mr. Callahan? Good, Mr. Hammer. Uh, yeah, so um, I know that those renderings are still currently being formulated uh, by the applicant. I was actually looking at those today. So I suspect those will be uh, forthcoming to the building department in the upcoming weeks. Okay. Now, just like to check again with the extensions and this condi when this conditions attached, I'd just like to see what the status of the conditions are at the time of the extension, just to see if uh, things are on. Uh, but again, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have any issues with the grant the Okay. Thank you, Mr. Callan. You, you're all set, sir. Yes, I'm all set. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Callan. Um, all right, moving on. Um, Chair recognizes Mr. Bria. Mr. Bria, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, no questions, no objections, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Breer. Uh, the, the chair recognizes Mr. Prokop. Mr. Prokop, uh, the chair, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, no questions at this time and no objections for the extension as well. Thank you, Mr. Prokop. Uh, the chair recognizes Mr. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ch uh, Vice Chairman. Um, the um, I I'm surprised that we don't have more of these um, variance requests for extensions this year. Um, I, I see no problem with granting an extension, especially in light of um, what what the what what we're going through with the whole COVID uh, delays, and especially with National Grid. So, I sympathize with your situation there and completely support the uh, granting of an extension. Thank, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Um, uh, Ms. Laney, uh, you know, I like like my colleague said, I, I totally understand why you need the extension request, so I have no objection myself. Um, so hearing, hearing we know all the comments from the board, um, we have a, a motion to approve the extension request at 157 Bill Ricker Street. Uh, three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on uh, ZB 2019-33 for 157 Bill Ricker Street to extend the previously granted variances for one year. Can we get a second to the motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second the motion. All right, motion by Mr. Callahan, second by Mr. McCarthy. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, approve the extension request. Member Callahan. Approve extension. Member McCarthy. Approve the extension request. Member Briere. Approve extension. 
Member Coco. Approve the extension. All right, Ms. Melania, you've been you've been approved for the extension. Uh, best best wishes with that project as well. Um, Mr. Vice Chair, thank you very much. And uh, Gentlemen, I, I appreciate you letting me move forward this evening uh, on those and taking me out of turn. Um, thank you to the other uh, applicants that are awaiting as well and uh, look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. All right, thank, thank you, Ms. Lania. All right, I'm um, going back um, to the agenda, uh, back in, in order under new business under ZB-2020-36. The petition is a variance. The applicant is Iglesia Pentecostal Diaz L. Honda Inc., uh, probably located at 211 Fletcher Street. Um, the petition is seeking grant pool to legalize the use of, a, of an existing building at the church at 211 Fletcher Street. The property is in the urban neighborhood multifamily zoning district and requires a Grant approval under section 6.1.4 for minimum off street parking and for all any other relief required of the low Jordan ordinance. Um, is, is the petitioner here this evening? Yes. Hi, good evening. Could you tell us a little bit about your project and what, uh, what are you doing there? Hi, um, good afternoon. Well, my name is Becky Roman, and um, we, we've been renting here on 211 Lecture Street for the last four years. Um, we had to get a permit about um, when I went this year to um, check about the permit. They told us that we needed um, a parking. Um, I don't know what's his name. He's the owner of um, the parking lot where Senior Center is. He let us um, use the parking all this time, um, but he didn't give us a letter saying that he asked us to use the parking. Um, right here, there used to be a, a store, so the signs say um, tow area. So we're trying to just have the parking there um, so we can park off street parking. All right, thanks. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Is, is, there, is there anything else you want to share with the board or the, the public? Or you, is that all? Is you all set? Ma'am? Yeah. Um, it, 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 well, are you all set with your summary and narrative? Is there anything else you want to share with the public and the board? Yeah, we, um, we're just trying to get the off-street parking so we can stay here in the building um, since we've been here for years and we haven't um, had any problems with the neighbors or anybody around here. Um, so that's why we're trying to get permission since those signs of um, toll song um, is there, like, and maybe they can change it so that we can park um, Dublin and um, part of Flexure Street. All right. If, if you're all set, thank, thank you, ma'am. If you're all set, we're going to open up um, this hearing to the public. Um, you're all set, right, ma'am? Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, so now we're going to open up the hearing to the public. Um, anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this petition? In favor, in favor, hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Opposition, opposition, hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Um, now we're gonna open up questions and comments to the board. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Proko. Proko, the floor is yours, sir. Oh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, I, I don't. I, I passed by the by the property, you know, over the weekend, and I mean, I I do see that you know there are limitations. Um, um, parking would help you with. I, I think you said you have about forty church members. Is that is and is yeah, there a, 
And is there a maximum amount of people that allowed in there for for parking? Um, On the, well, in, in we, that have area? A, we have a church van, so um, most of the people, they come in the um, church van. Um, some people, they just live um, close to the church. Okay, so some are within walking distance. Yeah. And have you had any complaints about parking? Never, never, never. Okay. And um, even with the parking in front, um, he let he let give a, he gave us permission to use it, but he just can't give a letter stating that he let us use it. So um, we for the past four years we never had any problems with the neighbors. Any complaints, any cops coming over here because of parking or never. And this this church, how many days a week do you have a service? Um, we have Sunday for um, 10.30 to 12.30. And Tuesday sometimes from 7.30 till 9. And then Thursday and Friday. There's only two hours. Okay. All right. So it's not usually in the peak time when there are a lot of vehicles passing by. No. Only some days. It, and usually there's no cars around. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, I don't have any other questions. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Propo. Um, the, the chair recognizes Mr. Breer. Uh, Mr. Breer, the, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mark Breer speaking. Uh, you indicate that you have a congregation of approximately 40 members. That's correct? Yes, correct. But it's like, um, it's not all adults. It's kids and teenagers. Okay. So, so understood. Each, each, each congregant isn't necessarily driving there. And you, you also hold services on four days of the week. Yes. Are uh, you fortunate enough to have uh, good attendance on all four days, or is Sunday more heavily attended than others? Only Sundays more. Okay, so so the, the big day would be Sunday. Yes. And approximately, approximately, how many of your faithful attend these services utilizing the van transportation you provide? Um. There's, there's like um, a couple, two couples and, and two elderly. Okay. Okay. I, um, I have no further questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I, I think this is relief that we can grant. I will certainly vote in favor of such. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Breer. Um, the the chair recognizes Mr. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy, the floor is yours, sir. Dennis, you're muted. <laughs> I am muted. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, for recognizing me. I have a couple of questions, but I'm really happy that this building is being used in this location, and I think this is a good use. Um, surprised that you've gotten by four years already without the um, request to go for the variance, but um, that shows that it's been working, apparently. Um, there is a condition um, suggested by the uh, DPD that you continue to operate the um, shuttle van if that's um, acceptable, I'd like to uh, suggest that we have a, that condition. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. And then um, in the past with uh, churches with parking issues in uh, neighborhoods, we've done an administrative review, a six month administrative review, just to check in to see if there's been any changes that would require us to revisit the parking. Um, so I'd like to suggest uh, to my fellow board members that we have a second condition that we do a six month administrative review. That's okay. 
Um, but I, I, I do like this uh, project. I especially like the fact that this building is being used this way. And um, the fact that you have uh, participants um, in the neighborhood that enjoy your, your church as well as um, you offer the shuttle. So I think that this uh, makes a lot of sense. And so I'd like to support it with just those two conditions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Um, all right. Uh, the chair organizes Mr. Callahan. Mr. Callahan, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and generally, I'm, I'm, I would be in favor of this. I just got a couple questions. So, are you only offering church services? Do you not use the church to do any other type of uh, services, uh, wedding type of? We, we've been limited because use? of the um, COVID 19. So, we, uh, we're not having big groups here. Yeah, no, I, no, I totally I understand that with that, uh, but I'm assuming we get out of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic in the future, which I'm, at some point we will. Uh, I'm just wondering, do, do you have conducted weddings in church? Yeah. Like most of the weddings we do is like private wedding. Like, um, I think like two two weeks I'm doing a private. It's just um, the, um, um, Marion's a couple, just them and the sister. So it's not in the Okay. No, no but, but that's something, I think that's something that the church was, it was uh, uh, we don't conducting know. a service that would then have um, more traffic and parking issues mm -hmm. that may commence. Uh, I would probably, if that's the case, as part of the condition, not only just say, I think DPD mentioned uh, transporting parishioners to and from services. I mean, I guess that would probably encompass weddings as well, I presume. But I think that's something we should future. That's another thing to try to, try to alleviate. Mm -hmm. I guess, where, where does the bus park when you have, well, the, the, the shuttle bus, where does you have that park? Where's the one? Sorry, I didn't hear. So you have a shuttle bus that, that's yeah. right. Where's where that park while the services are going on? Um, on Dublin, right there on Dublin. Right on the street. Yeah. But that's the, that's the whole point of like why you're here in the first place. Parking. We we don't have that much problem because um my sister is attending upstairs from the church. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it's great that we, you know, we have a church that is uh, staying local in the, in the area. Uh, you have any local parishioners who uh, are there having you, taking in your services, just uh, stay in the neighborhood, provide that service to, uh, to your parishioners. Uh, with the condition that Dennis had mentioned, I would uh, fully support this. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Callahan, uh, for your comments, sir. Um, um, Madam, um, you know, like, like my colleague said, I, I think this is a good reuse, repurpose of this building. Um, you know, I, I also believe that um, parking mm -hmm. is, is a very hard thing in that area uh, of, you know, Fletcher Street and just a very congested area. Um, you know, I, I am in favor of the, the, the condition of the shuttle service system. We have to keep that uh, just to be mindful of the neighbors. Um, and, and also, I know I know you mentioned earlier that that you you have parking at the at the low senior center, the parking lot, but it's no it's not any formal agreement. Um, is, is there any way that you can reach out to to them or to the parking lot people and just kind of kind of formulate some kind of just more formal um, parking agreement? In terms of just to help alleviate any parking congestion in, in that neighborhood, that's the problem we had. That's why we 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 came. We had to do this. Um, we had to go through Byron's because um, they didn't want to give us um, any letter because of the liability and if anything happened. So um, that's why. Oh, okay. We, okay. Yeah, we tried with him, but we couldn't. All right. So they, 
so when when you talk to the the person or the or the whoever it was, they they said that they'll let you guys use the parking lot to park on Sunday or whatever or your church. Yes. Um, church residents, but not nothing. They don't want anything. No, I they guess, just formal sort of liability or any any issues no. like that. Yeah. Okay. That's why they don't want to give no letter. But um, he say that there was no um, he didn't want no car overnight. Um, and that's what we've been doing for the four years. Um, I did talk to him, but because of the liability, he he can't give me a letter. Okay. No, I mean I mean I. I, that makes sense to me as well. Um, you know, like like I said, you know, I, I do agree with my colleagues that there's been no issues in the last four years or so of, of the church. You know, the, your, the, the people going to a church, your parishioners and all that. Um, I, I, I also do like Mr. McCarthy's comments in terms of a six-month review. Just to, as kind of a checkup uh, to see how things are going six months into it. Um, I, and I think it bodes, bodes well that, you know, no one's, no one's spoken opposition. Um, and, and, and also that, that you have a parishioner who also lives in the building and they're, they're part of the congregation. So I think overall, I think, you know, I can support this as well. Um, so, so, so madam, um, you heard the, the comments of the board and, and the conditions in terms of the shuttle system, um, being in place and the six month review, um, with all those comments and conditions, are, are you, are you okay to move forward with the vote tonight? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right. Um, can we just have a motion for the for the variance, please? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't want to pull my lawyer uh, hat on, but uh, I just want to. I'm trying. I'm trying to help her out with this because the word, the use of the words parishioners is a little bit kind of keeps it a little tight lip. I was thinking. I'm just going to say the and if, maybe if the other flow fell, Bowman is going to chime in if they're agreeable to this. Uh, condition church must continue to operate bus shuttle to transport uh, church attendees to and from services and other activities. That kind of encompasses everything, even weddings and any other activities. That, that, that sounds great. So thank, thank you for the for the for the wording yeah. of that, Mr. Kelly. Yeah. Thank you, sir. No problem. So, so uh, again, so with uh, that that condition and also the six month administrative reviews. Uh, Ms. Pastor Roman, if you're in agreement with those conditions, uh, we can move forward. Are you in agreement with those conditions? Yes. Okay, so with that being said, three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on PB 2020-36-211 Pleasure Street, a variance approval under Section 6.1 for off street parking to legalize the use of the existing building as a church with the condition, the following conditions. Number one, the church must continue to operate the bus shuttle to transport church attendees to and from services and other activities at the church. And number two is a six month administrative review to be scheduled by Thank you. All right, motion by Mr. Callan. Is, is there a second to the motion? George broke up seconds. All right, second by Mr. Prokop. Um, can we have a roll call please? Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, approval conditions. Member Callahan. Approval conditions. Member McCarthy. Approval of conditions. Member Briere. Approval of conditions. Member Procope. Approval of conditions. All right, ma'am, you, you've been approved with conditions. Uh, we wish you the best of luck with you and uh, your, your church. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next uh, agenda item under new business. DB-2020-37, uh, a variant, the applicant, uh, John C. Gary, care of Low Mission Church, the property located at 403 Andover Street. Um, Low Mission Church is seeking variance approval to replace a pre-existing non-conforming freestanding sign with the largest sign, the property um, in the suburban single zoning district, a Proposal requires variance approval under section 6.3 to alter a pre existing non conforming sign and for any other relief required of the low zone ordinance. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman Peck, uh, members of the board. For the record, my name is Attorney Stephen Geary. I represent uh, the Wall Mission Church and its representative, Kenneth Gordon, in this petition. 
Um, just by way of history, the church uh, in its current ownership has began worshiping in about 2007 after they purchased uh, the building and the business and then renovated the property to the state it's in now. They have a pre-existing uh, non-conforming sign at the property that faces north and south or parallel to Andover Street. The request for the variance here is to uh, replace that worn out sign with a new sign uh, that's slightly bigger, that's 4.8, but when you look at it with the bushes that are near now to the current sign, it's about six inches uh, more either in both ways, length and width. This petition meets all the criteria for special hardship. It meets the criteria for public good and it doesn't uh, interfere with the intent of zoning at all in that area. This church has been there for a very long time. Um, my understanding is they're good neighbors um, and that this is uh, just a replacement of a worn out sign uh, and the other request is to have this facing east and west as opposed to north and south, obviously for visibility reasons for their signage. So if you, you saw the photograph, uh, gentlemen, on Exhibit B as to what the sign would look like. Um, and I think we sent in a previous photo as to the current sign. So you'll see that it's, it's an improvement uh, to the area. I do know that one of the neighbors had uh, requested um, they have the sign moved to a different area because of uh, its location or some sort of obstruction, but uh, they did explain to that neighbor my understanding to her satisfaction as to what they were doing as far as, um, you know, where the sign is, the, the traffic and safety had no issues with it. Uh, we went through that department and all the other departments and there were no comments uh, that I'm aware of. So would ask respectfully that you uh, approve uh, this petition to replace this sign that uh, was pre-existing non-conforming. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Councilor Gary. Um, now we're gonna move on to the public hearing uh, for this petition. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? In favor? In favor, hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Uh, Jim Hall. Oh, go, go ahead, sir, Mr. Hall. Um, just state your name and address for the record and, and go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's uh, Jim Hall at 14 Penn Tucker Avenue. I live directly across from the church, not to outdo attorney Gary, but I've been there since 1956 and familiar with the property. And unfortunately, I'm against this petition. I've sent to the board a memo or an outline. I don't know if the board members have received it. And if not, I'd like to read that man, man, memo. It's a little unusual to do so, but I'd like to read it because it gives the points of why I oppose to this variance request. And uh, then I would be willing to enable, hopefully to answer any questions that the board members might have. So Mr. Chairman, if I could believe, uh, begin with the memo. Yeah, I'm sure people read it, but yeah, go ahead, Ms. Hall, if you feel you need to read the memo, it's fine, go ahead. All right, dear Mr. Chairman, I would like to submit the following statement as my opposition to the Lowell Mission Church request for a variance to erect a new sign. The petition states in the narrative that it needs a variance to construct a slightly larger sign than the existing one. The existing sign is four by three plus 12 square feet. Depending on how you look at the sign, the new sign, the size of the new sign, it is substantially larger than the present sign. The petitioner claims that uh, states in his petition that it is a four by eight sign, which would come out to 32 square feet. That sign is two times, 2.7 times larger than the present sign. If you look at the picture of the new sign in the packet, the structure is six times eight, six times eight or four, six feet by eight feet or 48 square feet or four times the existing sign. To go further, the existing sign is 12 square feet, but the new sign is at least 32 square feet on each side for a total of 64 square feet of face signage. And that is 5.3 times more face signage than what is presently there. So I don't think this is just a slightly larger sign. It's from a magnitude of a minimum of 2.7 times larger 
is 5.3 times larger. The narrative continues with the prediction they're saying that it is replacing an existing outdated sign with a similar sign. Nothing could be further from the truth. The present sign sits at ground level, one sided, substantially smaller, and faces parallel to Andover Street. The proposed sign is perpendicular to Andover Street, and it is changeable, a changeable two-sided sign and substantially larger. It is an affront to the neighborhood to say that the proposed sign is any way similar to the existing sign. I'd like to just back away from the memo and say that I wouldn't be here objecting to this proposal if this wasn't a substantially larger sign and a substantially different sign. But such it is, and we can see the numbers that I've just related to the board in the description of the new sign. And if we had a thousand people walk by the door and saw both sides, not one of them would say they are similar. I'd be sure of that. <clears throat> the next thing I'd like to get into is the low zoning code relative to sign. If one looks at the low zoning code relative to signs, it represents approximately 10% of the entire zoning code. Evidently, the city of Lowell citizens take great concern with the erection of signs. I'd like to point out just a few ways that the proposed site potentially violates the zoning code. Excuse me. Just can't move. Can you move that up, please? The sign, signs are prohibited in residential single family districts. This district is a single family district. I'd like to digress and say, but if it were in a commercial district or another district, the sign still is problematic. If it were lo located where signs were permitted, the area faced to the sign, and I want to strike 30 to say 50, <clears throat> and this sign is anywhere from 32 on one side, and, the, and we have to compile both sides. So in reality, the sign is not 48 square feet, it's 64 square feet. So that would violate any district sign size anywhere in the city, let alone one where it doesn't allow signs. And there's some other things like the location might be too close to the public way. Uh, such signs shall be erected so as not to obstruct the free ingress and egress from a, the building or a public right of way. This sign is approximately 10 or 15 feet from the sidewalk on Pentecost Avenue. It is very dangerous process for a driver in Pentucket Avenue to enter onto Andover Street in either direction. In the winter, snow mounds along Andover Street in either direction are from three to five feet high. It is a nightmare to enter Andover Street with cars traveling 40 to 50 miles an hour. Although the posted sign is uh, 35 miles an hour, I can assure you that no one does less than 40. To add this sign in or near the field of vision, should not be allowed, it's just too dangerous. And also I was thinking with all these rules against texting and looking at your phone when you're driving, the sign is going to be interchangeable. People are going to be distracted from driving. People are going 10 to 15 feet away from the exit of Pentucket Avenue going to be reading this sign while they smash into a car in the, in the driver's side going 40 or 50 miles an hour. I fear for people's safety going down the end of the street and also exiting Pentucket Avenue. This sign is just too close. It's too distractive. It's me meant to be distractive. It's going to change on a weekly basis, deliver different messages. People are going to be enticed to look at the sign and it's only 15 minutes, seconds, 15 feet away from the intersection. It's just too dangerous to be allowed. So if this was in any other similar situation in a business district at all, it would not be allowed. But well, we know that freestanding signs are not allowed in single family districts. Signs with letters are not allowed in single family districts, nor are moving signs. So for those particular reasons, that's why I'm here speaking against. It. So should the petitioner obtain a variance? We all know, every member knows the variance criteria they must find before the board can I'm just trying to move this board can grant this variance. In fact, it is stated in the petitioner's application. We all know there has to be a special hardship due to the, the soil conditions, shape and topography of the land, 
uh, structure, and especially affecting the land uh, structure not generally found in the zoning district. The applicant does not have a hardship. The petitioner says we meet this requirement because the existing sign is in poor condition and not cost effective to repair. This clearly does not meet the special hardship requirement of Mass General Laws or your board's requirement. Financial hardships have never been found in Mass General Law to be the basis of a hardship. It has to be solely due to the shape, topography, or soil conditions of the land or structure in the premises. I am writing this before the meeting, but I guess that the petitioner's attorney never once mentioned soil conditions, shape, or topography of the land or structures which especially affect such land or structures, not gen generally the zoning district. And I, to confirm that, I did not have Attorney, here, Attorney Gary mentioned any of those details. The hardship is due to the land and its special conditions, not the petitioner's financial hardship. The petitioner has no legal hardship that is required under Mass General Laws 40A. <clears throat> the public good. This granting of this petition is not in the public good of the city of Lowell of the neighborhood to grant this petition. The petitioner says that the sign is aesthetically pleasing. Well, I believe that it's an eyesore, dangerously blocking sight lines to the highly trafficized highways. It is too large. It will stand out like a sore thumb as the only such sign in the neighborhood. The present, the present sign is tasteful, properly sized, and does not offend the neighborhood. To build a proposed two-sided sign that changes on a weekly basis does not fit into this neighborhood and therefore not in the public good. The intent of the zoning is satisfied. To grant this variance, the board cannot nullify or substantially derogate from the intent of the bylaw. Freestanding signs are not permitted in a residential district. If we can get over that fact, which I really can't, I previously listed several ways that this violates the zoning code, even if it were placed in a business district. So I guess the petition is arguing is so long as he builds a new sign and he can put it anywhere he wants, it makes with any size that he desires. Well, that is why we have the zoning code to protect neighborhoods from a derogation of the zoning code, code and the nullification thereof. I respectfully request the board denies this variance on the basis of public safety and all, for all the other matters that I have outlined and more particularly because the petitioner has not shown special hardship due to the land, his petition violates the public good, and it substantially derogates and nullifies the intent of the Lowell Zoning Code. Uh, thank you for that, listening to me on that long address. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer it to the board or anyone listening. Thank, uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Hall, uh, for, for your comments. Um, it, it is appreciated when the public um, you know, ways in on the petition. So thank you for your comments, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Um, so moving forward, we're going to continue um, public hearing. Um, again, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? 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 Hearing none, that portion of public hearing is closed. Um, we're going to open up uh, comments and questions to the board now. Um, the chair recognizes Mr. Breer. Breer, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, Mark Rea speaking, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, ask uh, Attorney Gary to uh, address uh, Attorney Hall's assertion that the proposed sign uh, may create some type of traffic obstruction. When I initially reviewed this, that was my first concern, why the sign would be so much larger than the previous one. So I'd like to hear how Mr. Geary responds to uh, Mr. Hall's comments. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Uh, thank you, Mr. Breer. I would like to respond to Attorney Hall's uh, comments. The First of all, as you know, this sign is a pre-existing uh, non-conforming sign. So the issue 
regarding zoning and the intent. I disagree completely with uh, Attorney Ball's analysis of uh, what we're trying to do here. This uh, does not uh, have any type of negative impact on zoning at all. And as far as public good, in maybe a neighbor's uh, subjective opinion, it doesn't meet a public good, but it does meet a public good for other people, I would suggest. This is a church. There is signage on Andover Street and a church further up the street on both ends of Andover Street that the signage is equivalent to what we propose. I don't know anything of any accidents or anything happening in that area. I also live in that area and I drive down Pawtucket Street several times a week. Um, I don't see this sign having a problem with it. I would have an issue with it if it did. But this sign is not, I mean, Attorney Hall is mentioning 64 square feet because of both sides. If you saw the other side, that doesn't make any sense. That's just trying to, uh, you know, increase the size of the sign in your minds. This sign is stated what the other sign was, 4.3 going to 4.8 and changing it from east, from north to, to south to east to west. It makes sense to go east to west because that way people can read the sign. There's a reason for a sign. A sign is supposed to be there so people can read it. I, there are signs and billboards and highways and all across, all across every major thoroughfare uh, and, and much, much busier than Andover Street. And there's no accidents, otherwise we wouldn't have any signs. So I don't know, you know, the, the idea of a car smashing into another car going 40 or 50 miles an hour, you know, doesn't make sense to me. There's, you know, he, Mr. Hall has a right to his opposition. He stated very clearly what that was. And I would just respectfully uh, counter with it's, this is the replacement of a sign. It does meet the criteria for hardship. It does meet the criteria for public good. And it does, uh, it does not uh, have any negative impact on zoning. If you had to have uh, something regarding soil condition, shape, or topography regarding a sign, uh, there would be no variance for signs. And this is a different type of animal when you're going before the board for a sign approval. I don't hear uh, that argument that it doesn't meet zoning usually unless it's going to change the sign substantially. And again, this is a change from 4.3 to 4.8. A lot of that is the base, the brick base that's there. It was blended in aesthetically um, with the architecture of the building to look good. So it's, you know, I, I would argue that it's going to be anything but an eyesore. It wouldn't serve the benefit of the church if it wasn't an eyesore. And uh, the church has shown that they've been a good neighbor in that area. I don't I know of anything where they haven't been. And there's one person opposing this. And I would suggest to you that that's not at all unusual to have one person oppose it. But I do think that this um, petition meets all the requirements. I think it's a very uh, minor request for a replacement of a pre-existing sign changing the, the location of the sign. If the, if, the issue, if the board has an issue of where the sign is or where it's going to be placed, I'd be happy to consider, you know, what the board has to say about that. But you do know that um, the travel and, I'm sorry, traffic and safety did weigh in on this and had no issues with it. The first thing on all the petitions I've done over the years would be traffic and safety would say there's, a, uh, there's an issue with how deep it is, or there's an issue with an obstruction, or there's an issue with an encroachment, or anything that would impact traffic or safety, especially on uh, a suburban uh, single family area, and especially on Andover Street. And they reviewed this petition, and there were no issues because there really are no traffic. You can, you know, make it seem like there's going to be, you know, carnage everywhere, but I would suggest to you, uh, gentlemen, that that clearly is not the case, and you have to go no further than earlier up on Andover Street at the beginning of the intersection where there's a church that has large signs, we have messages on it, and there's never been any issues that I'm aware of there. You go further down Andover Street in a suburban area across from the school in Crooksbury, and there's huge signs. Uh, this is just a sign, and I would say it's slightly bigger uh, than the other sign. I wouldn't say, you know, 64 square feet because there's two sides. I mean, I think that's, you know, that, that's not a credible uh, argument. And I think if you do that, then you have to add the four times, three times, twice two and see that that's the difference. So, you know, I, I understand Attorney Hall uh, lives there. I understand that he, he doesn't want it and I understand his reasons why, but 
My client does have a right um, to replace that sign there, and we're asking the board respectfully uh, to approve this uh, petition. No further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Breer. Um, the chair recognizes um, Mr. Callahan. Mr. Callahan, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, 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 I understand Attorney Hall's concern. Sympathize. I, I've looked at this. Attorney Gary, I think you uh, answered, you, you answered all my concerns on that. I, I, I don't think, I, I can understand that the, the prop, the one thing, the one thing I think would, uh, I would like to get more information on or I'd like to get an understanding of, it looks like the sign is being placed right closer towards Kentucky intersection. What's the possibility of just moving it over to the other side before the uh, before the parking lot? Maybe that would that would at least alleviate. I think Attorney Hall, I can understand Attorney Hall's concern about coming off of Pentucket Street, you know, looking the traffic either way. Maybe the sign might be an obstruction. But I don't know. But, that's, but I mean, it, it seems to me that if you can move the sign over to the other portion of the front lawn before the next to the parking lot, maybe that might alleviate at least that. And I, it's it's a good point. I'm looking, I'm looking at the Mr. Callahan. I'm looking at the um, the photo right now, and I in my the reason the reason it was going to stay in that area is because that's where those bushes, that's where that whole foundation and everything was, and they didn't want to because it's a pre-existing non-conform, and they didn't want to move it. But Mr. Gordon is on um, this this Zoom, so if I could ask him if he could address the issue of whether or not. If the sign could move closer to the parking area, thereby leaving uh, Attorney Hall's issues with, you know, some obstruction in that area. Is that, um, Mr. Gordon, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Attorney Gary. Okay, can you, is it okay to respond to that? I know we're not in person. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know if you have to set that's the answer. Uh, I Yes, uh, currently, as I think about it, we, uh, you know, originally it was just to replace the existing sign where the bushes are and, and thought it would just kind of best be there because that's where the current one is. And uh, from my uh, measurement, it wasn't blocking the view for, from turning on Andover Street in either direction from what's currently there now. Um, the uh, On the other side, uh, yes, it could go there. I, it, it's kind of used sometimes, depending on how much snow there is, we may push some snow to that part of uh, the entrance, um, but you know I can adjust that uh, and 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 have the sign facing east west on the on the other side. Thank you. So, Mr. Callahan, I think as the condition, we 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 would accept that, and I think part of it he, we would also say that you know the mission church pushes pushes the snow away from that area and not towards it. So I think yeah. I think it wouldn't make sense to put the snow, you know, to store the snow in that area where the sign is, it would defeat the purpose of the east-west sign. So okay. I think as a condition and a, and a good suggestion by you and then Mr. Gordon might be to um, alleviate uh, Attorney Hall's concerns by putting it as you're facing the picture, putting it on the right side where the grass is. Yes, that, that, that's what I think. Because I'm looking at it now, I pulled it up on Google, on Google Street. Uh, yeah, I attached the, at it from the back side. Yeah, I saw the pictures. I didn't see it from the back side where the foundation of the sign was. I'm looking at it on the Google Maps, Google Street. I can see that, but it looks like you would have to change that foundation anyway. With if you're going to be turning the turning the, the sign perpendicular. Right. No, and it, and it would be. But what I was saying is, when I, sh I shouldn't have used the word foundation. The, see, if you look at the on the left side where the current sign is now, you see all the bushes. It was kind of I think what yeah. Mr. Gordon said. You know, why why change anything? So. He didn't want, he wanted less change because it was a pre-existing non-conforming, but yeah. as a condition, he would take all that out. He'd have to re-landscape around there and move the sign to the, uh, as you're facing the building to the right. And I think that uh, is a good suggestion by you. And I think uh, it's a, it's a, a good condition. That's, 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 you know what, I, 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 I think that's a, I, I would probably go with that. At least, at least I think it kind of alleviates his other concerns that Mr. Hall brought up. Uh, Attorney Hall, all, all respect, brought up about coming off of Pentucket uh, Street and having 
because clock works directions go in there. So I think uh, I would probably go with that if we can move the right hand side. And that's acceptable to my client if it is proposed as a condition. And you know, that being the case, I mean, looking at the sign itself, um, with the foundation, I mean, the, the zoning code requires 32 feet. I mean, it's, thir it's 30 feet. I mean, you're looking at 32 square feet. Um, that being said, with that, with the criteria, I believe that there, there is a hardship here. It's the church has been, it's a, the, the church has been in existence far as well, right? probably long before my, you know, my grandparents were even. And it's good. It's a. It would be a public good for the community, as you said, uh, because you know, the church goers and the community as a whole. So, uh, with that being said, I mean, I would be in support of this if you move as far as sign gets moved to the right hand side. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Mr. Callahan. Uh, the chair recognizes Mr. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, to me, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a couple of questions. Um, I'd like to bring a little clarity. I think that um, what we just uh, talked about with moving it to the other side really is um, a stronger location for the neighborhood to move it to that side, especially. Um, we don't have a site plan submitted that indicates exactly where the sign would be. Is that correct? Or I have been looking for one. I asked Fran if there was one. So we don't really have anything that was submitted that talks about exactly how far off of the sidewalk the new sign would be. Is that correct? Are, are you I, asking me, Mr. McCarthy? Or are you asking? Um, um, I asked Fran already. She didn't have one. And so, Attorney Gary, is, is there a plan that indicates the location of the sign? I believe my application um, says that there was a, a site plan attached. So I thought there was something that was attached to that that would show where it is. Um, I'm just checking my application right now. Yeah, I don't have it in my- Actually, um, I'm looking at my note right here and it said that um, we, we spoke to, about this direct issue, we spoke to Jared um, and Jared said to just submit a picture showing the building and that would, suffice if we showed that we did not need a site plan. We specifically asked about that, um, Mr. McCarthy, because I know a prior petition um, that it didn't involve a sign, it actually involved something else. You asked for the site plan, I believe because it was a driveway issue. Um, and then we were able to get one. On this case, we consulted with Jared specifically on that issue. And he said that we could submit the picture of the existing as well as the proposed sign. But, you know, if, if, if as part of a, condition, we could also submit a site plan that will show exactly where that is. If it's approved tonight, where, where it will be on that uh, right side, so there's no question. We'd be happy to do that as a supplemental uh, submission. I'd like to make that um, as a supplemental submission, and I'd like to ask that um, in a new location that we match the or or, or increase the dimension from the sidewalk so we we do not we do not encroach on the dimension from the existing sign to the sidewalk but we either match that dimension of i think it might be in the neighborhood of five to eight feet i'm not sure yeah and we could delineate the, that on this on the site plan showing exactly um so i see what you're saying yes but i would like to make sure that we uh, direct the the um, comment that we match or exceed the setback with the new sign um, from the existing sign. Okay, and that's acceptable. All right, great. And then um, what what um, Sean was noticing, um, I, I noticed as well the size of the existing sign. The the two brick piers are roughly twenty inches each. And so the existing sign is um, four feet. And so that's roughly 88 inches. So we're going from a, a shape, if you will, of roughly 88 inches to 96 inches. Even, yes, though, the brick, even though the brick piers are not indicated as signage, they still re reflect part of the shape of the existing element. And so we're basically going from 88 to 96. So it's an increase only of about eight inches of that of that element. 
and then also the height of it, you currently have a nearly two foot base of brick there, and then your sign rises above that by three by three feet, I think. So um, you're really asking for an increase in height of roughly a foot from what currently exists as far as the existing element that's there already. Right. So it's pretty close to what you currently have. So I think that the restraint again of your request is significant. I think it just wants to be pointed out that the existing element is roughly 88 inches by um, five feet high and we're going to 96 by six feet high. 96 or eight feet by 96 by, by six feet high. So it's not a significant change aesthetically for the neighborhood, I think. Um, I'd like to just ask about the orientation. So we're changing it from a east-west orientation to a north-south orientation. Is that right. correct? Yes, the uh, the current sign faces north-south. So if you're driving by, you would actually have to, and you want to read the sign, it's actually more dangerous you would turn your head away from, you know, the direction that you're driving to read a sign, as opposed to as you're driving in the sign, you read it as you come up to the sign and you, you know, come in both ways. And that's the whole purpose of, of um, signage is so people can see it. why the sign was ever put north south. I don't have an answer for you, but um, I don't know, you know, wh why that was like that in the first place, but this sign makes more sense. And, and a church has a right to uh, advertise. And I believe that anything they advertise is going to be, you know, with taste. It's not going to be offensive to anybody, regardless of um, of how you believe. But, um, you know, you can see the sign, you know, some of the signs. They, they know on the current sign, uh, Mr. McCarthy, that it's an old mission church with some small writing out of it. If you can imagine a car riding by there trying to look at it, um, that would be more dangerous than what we propose. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. I agree. Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag if you go and, and view um, churches uh, in residential areas. Um, I think on High Street, we have one that runs perpendicular to the street for um, Holy Trinity. Um, but in general, the churches do seem to favor, at least in the for whatever reason, a parallel to the streetscape. But um, I agree with you on Andover Street in order for signage to be successful, um, it would want to be turned so that it could be easily viewed by people driving. So I agree with you. I think that that orientation would be uh, advantageous. And I think uh, supporting the relocation to the other side would solve the sight lines of traffic on uh, Pentucket. So um, I think I can support this. Um, and um, I just think that the uh, condition of you providing a site plan indicating the actual dimension from the sidewalk that would indicate maybe existing sign and proposed sign so that we know that we don't have an encroachment um, in that front yard area with the signage, that'd be great. Okay, and if I could just, I just wanted to uh, comment for one thing, you know, Mr. Gordon and his wife did go around the neighborhood um, seeking um, input about the sign. They didn't have any uh, negative input that they couldn't answer questions to. I know they did attempt a couple of times to uh, go to the Hall's house and Attorney Hall and his wife uh, were not home, at least at that time. So uh, I did get calls from a couple of neighbors who asked what it was and I told them and they said, that sounds good, we have no problem with it. But um, I didn't you know, have anybody come. I didn't think this was going to be a major issue, to be honest with you. Um, sure. But I do see, I do definitely see Attorney Hall's point that he's making. Uh, he lives there. He's lived there since 1956, but I've only been alive since 63, so he definitely beats me. Um, but I think moving it over, I think moving it over makes sense. I think uh, it only makes sense to go east, uh, west. And then I think just one thing we have to make sure, I think you would want to make sure is that the snow removal doesn't then impede that area where he puts the snow on that driveway. It looks like, I know that area, there's plenty of place to store uh, snow. So it doesn't good. have to be stored near Andover Street, in other words. Very good. Well, I think I'm satisfied. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. No further questions. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Um, 
So, Chair, recognize this is Mr. Procope. Mr. Procope, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairman. Um, I, I actually I, I agree with uh, with uh, my fellow board members. Um, there is a church that's further up in Tewksbury. It's a Baptist church that the sign is visible enough that when people are driving, you 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 can read the sign just as if you're reading when it says uh, when you're on 93 to take exit 43 to come on to 133. Um, I do share the sentiment about the sign moving, you know, a little bit, um, you know, on the other side. Um, but other than that, I, I, I think if you, if you, it's, it's, it's better where the sign would change because you wouldn't want people to be straining to, to try and see what, what's, what's, what's on there, which would present more of a risk. So um, I, I think it's, it's a good move. Thank, thank you, Mr. Proko. Um, I, I think uh, for myself, you know, I, I did have similar concerns to, uh, you know, some of the others. Uh, Mr. Hall, his comments did, did resonate with me. Um, you know, and, and I really think, um, to, to, to your credit, Mr. Gary and, and the board and Mr. Gordon, uh, we, we seem to come to kind of a common ground in terms of, of you know, just placement and just moving to the other side and in terms of just flow with actual traffic of of the traffic pattern and you know I, I and I also agree that this this sign this new proposed sign it, it is it is large in scale but I think it's it's done tastefully and and you know not too intrusive of, of the neighborhood um, so I think I think overall I think this is a very fair compromise and it, it makes sense and you know I, uh, hopefully you know we we all kind of just worked it out and you know, it, it, it works out for, for all the neighbors, but also for the petition as well. So overall, I think, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm in favor of the, the conditions of relocating the sign uh, and then also getting the, the dimensions and all that for the site plan. Um, so, so hearing all that, Mr. Uh, uh, Attorney Gary, are, are you in favor of uh, moving forward with a vote with, with the previously mentioned conditions sir yes uh, both could both conditions um as i understand them they would be that uh, actually there's three conditions so the condition would be that the sign is moved as you're facing the church to the right um area of the yard on the other side of the uh, walk that the sign um is no closer to the sidewalk and that would have to be demonstrated and evidenced by a submission of a site plan showing that that it hasn't encroached at all toward the sidewalk. In other words, if anything, it, it has to go closer towards the church. Um, and I think we mentioned the snow removal at the church would not impede, um, you know, the, I don't know if that's related. I just brought that up as an aside, so it's probably not related. So yes, the two conditions, and my understanding is my client is uh, on board with that, but could I just ask him? Uh, Ken, are you, do you understand the conditions? Yeah, yep, those, those are fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Gary, I was gonna, I was gonna mention the snow removal is gonna have to be up to your client because he's going to be snow there. Now with the sign there, it's not gonna be so much snow there. Right, because he would defeat the purpose of the sign, yeah, right? Exactly. So. Yeah. Yep, so I had it as a freestanding sign, the condition freestanding sign location to be moved to uh, right side, front right side of the building, uh, with location matching current setbacks, uh, at current location. That's the, is that what you said, Dennis? That's uh, match, would, match the current setbacks? Would, would match or exceed the setback of the current sign? Match, match or exceed the current setbacks. Yep. Okay. And then, uh, new plans with, uh, location of the, new site plans with location of the sign. Those would be the two. And those are acceptable to my client. All right, thank, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Gary, Attorney Gary. Um, so uh, moving forward, we'll, we'll move forward with the vote with the previously mentioned condition. Um, so can, can we have a, a vote, please? A motion for a vote. Three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on DB 2020-37 for 403 Andover Street for a variance approval under section 6.3 to alter a pre-existing non-conforming pre-standing sign with previously mentioned. Okay, 
Can we have a second, please? Really, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second the motion. All right, motion by Mr. Callahan, second by Mr. McCarthy. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, approve with conditions. Member Callahan. Approve with conditions. Member McCarthy. Approve with conditions. Member Briere. Approve with conditions. Member Proco. Uh, we may have lost George. I don't see him on the line. Oh yeah, I don't see him either. But that um that's so four of you. So all right, so so we still have a four oh, four getting readmitted. Oh. Okay. He should be back. We'll just wait for Mr. Poco. Thank you everyone for right. for helping with the technology and all the technical stuff. Thank you for your patience, everybody. I apologize, I get kicked out. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Mr. Proko. Um, Ms. Sigliana, can we just run that motion one more time just so, so everyone's on, on the same page? Yeah, I can do it again. Thank you. So, Vice Chair and Peck? Uh, approve conditions. Member Callahan? Approve with conditions. Member McCarthy? Approve with conditions. Member Briere? Approve with conditions. Member Proko. Approve with conditions. All right. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Gary. You and your client have been approved uh, with, with the conditions. Wish you the best of luck uh, with your project. Um, and then we're also going to take one item out of order. Uh, Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you to the zoning board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Gordon, Attorney Gary. Uh, we're going to take one item out of order. Um, uh, Attorney Gary, you have a, a petition under other business, an extension request uh, at 116, 120 Fletcher Street. The option is seeking to extend the variance approval for the residential redevelopment project. A new owner would like additional time to resolve parking conditions of approval. Uh, the option received variance approval at the October 17, 2019. Uh, ZBA meeting. Uh, Mr. Gary, is there anything else you want to share in terms of- Yeah, so, so just there? first of all, thank you for taking out of order and I apologize to Attorney Theodoro and any other applicants that are waiting. Um, this, I expect this to be very brief. Because of everything that's been going on, my clients, are, uh, we sent a letter in September 18th asking for a one-year extension. There was an issue over the parking. They, it took a lot of work to figure out that out. They finally figured it out, so there's a path to be able to do that and then go before the planning board and change the plans and do whatever they have to do. So uh, we are hoping it's well before a year, but we're asking out of abundance of caution for one year extension on this um, on this project. So it came before the Board of Appeals um, several months ago, back in the end of 2019. And it's just been kind of uh, with everything going on with the with COVID and everything else, it's just been log jammed. Uh, so this one's going to be a little bit behind, and we just uh, and I do think every issue is going to be addressed. Uh, so it's going to end up being a better project, but we do need that time. So I respectfully ask uh, you approve that extension for one year. Uh, th thank you, Councilor Gary. Um, so now we're going to open up um, this uh, request um, to the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak in favor? Of this petition in favor, in favor, hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. In motion, speaking in opposition, in opposition, in opposition, hearing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Um, but we're going to open up to the board uh, for questions and comments. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy? Uh, three, Mr. Chairman, I really am uh, very sympathetic these days to. Um, Anyone looking for a variance ex uh, extension just because of the uh, delays with uh, COVID. So I completely support uh, providing this extension and uh, look forward to seeing this project go forward. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, sir. Um, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Proko. Mr. Proko, um, the floor is yours, sir. Um, I have no objections uh, for uh, the deterrence next year. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Proko. Um, the chair recognizes um, Mr. Breer. Mr. Breer, the floor is yours, sir. 
Malfrey is speaking, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no questions, no objections. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Breer. Uh, the chair recognizes Mr. Callahan. Mr. Callahan, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you for you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I generally don't have any objections, but uh, Attorney Gary, just want to double, just want to check the status on the condition. I know this thing was granted, but uh, a couple of conditions. Yeah, move forward on that. So, on what, what, what are you referring to, Mr. Callahan? So there was a, uh, there, there were three conditions. Uh, applicant must secure at least for a minimum of eight additional lots to be parking spaces. Um, six six month administrative review after occupancy. I presume an occupancy permit hasn't been. But, right. Yeah, so, so that so the issues the, the issue the outstanding issue is the park and yeah. they have uh, <coughs> it took them a while they couldn't they couldn't find it but they've acquired the parking uh, it just needs okay. to be finalized uh, so all those conditions will be met we we don't anticipate going back and asking that they be amended at all uh, but well, it did take a little bit of while just because everything's taken a long time to work its way through the system oh so completely completely understandable thank you I just wanted to check the status yep everything should be good. All right, sounds good. Uh, and I don't have any objections to it. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank you, Mr. Gallen. Um, uh, you know, I'm in agreement with my colleagues. Um, I, I don't have any objections, and I fully totally understand why the extension is needed. Um, you know, during these uh, difficult times. Um, all right, he hearing that, uh, we'll go forward with the extension request vote. Um, can, can we have a motion, please? Three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on DB 2019-40 for 116 and 128 Fletcher Street uh, to extend the previously granted variances for one year. Can we have a second, please? Nice to you. motion. All right, motion by Mr. Kelly and second by Mr. Breer. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, uh, approve extension. Member Callahan. Approve extension. Member McCarthy. Approve extension for one year. Member Briere. Approve extension. Member Procope. Approve extensions one year. All right, uh, Attorney Gary, you've been approved for extension um, on your request. Wish you the best of luck, you and the client, sir. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a good night. And George, I owe you a coffee for jumping over you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Have a good night, fellas. Oh, the other George. Have a good evening. Thank Doesn't you. Doesn't matter. Much. I owe you a coffee, too. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I wanna, uh, moving on to um, new business again and back into our regular agenda item, um, ZB-2020-40. The petition is a variance. The applicant, George, Theodores, care of Cole Jack Development Corp, uh, probably look at 7 through 11 Abbott Street. Um, the petitioner is seeking variance and special permit approval to construct a new single family home at 7 Abbott Street, the lot that has merged with 11 Abbott Street for the purpose of zoning. 7 Abbott Street is in the traditional mixed use zoning district and 11. Abbott Street is in the traditional <coughs> neighborhood two family zone district. Unmerging the lot requires variance under section 5.1 for the pre existing non conforming single family home at 11 Abbott Street and to construct the new single family home at 7 Abbott Street for the lot size, lot area per dwelling unit, minimum frontage, and front yard setback. 7 Abbott Street also leads the lease under section 5.1 for the rear yard setback and a special permit under section 12.1 a for the use and for all other relief required of the low zoning ordinance um a, a, attorney theodore uh, welcome and thank you for being patient sir now i'm on i'm muted i believe uh thank yes, you yes 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 sir Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, uh, and thank you, members of the board, for all your patience. Uh, and uh, yes, this, uh, we're requesting variance here, seeking uh, uh, approval to unmerge two lots, uh, 7 Abbott Street and 11 Abbott Street. There is a single family home at 11 Abbott Street, and 7 Abbott Street is a vacant parcel. Um, Requiring that takes a number of variances, which has been stated, 
by by uh, by Mr. Van Peck, and uh, I'm calling your attention uh, to the uh, the comments that were made by the uh, DPD, who went through and did a very very thorough analysis of the neighborhood with respect to uh, 13 properties in uh, uh, with respect to lot size, with respect to frontage, with respect to the setback. And their analysis showed that our proposed uh, uh, request for variances for both the existing single family home on that lot and the uh, number seven Abbott Street to build a single family home on that parcel uh, exceeds the median lot size of the other 13 properties in the neighborhood. Uh, they also, that goes for both of those lots. Uh, so as a result of that, you know, I think you can draw uh, from uh, the uh, conclusion that an approval of variances for these lots to unmerge the lot to allow for the existing lot to exist as a uh, non-conforming lot and for the uh, construction of a single family home on the vacant parcel at 7 Abbott Street would not derogate at all from the zoning bylaws, but this would actually conform. It would fit in with the neighborhood. It would uh, add value to the neighborhood. We are, uh, this is a, a single family home, which again in the comments states that the elevations uh, of 7 Abbott Street are in line with the residential development guidelines for traditional neighborhoods. So with that, it would fit in with the neighborhood character. Um, also with respect to, and uh, Mr. Hammer is here tonight as the project en engineer on this, there was a request for stormwater mitigation, which, 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 which has been completed, submitted to DPD and approved by the stormwater team. Uh, there also, I wanted to point out to the board, uh, although, you know, I, I, I know that each project is determined individually on its own merits, uh, but there was a very similar project that was approved by this board back in, I believe it was January for uh, the same, same type of project on Abbott Street. Uh, and 22 Abbott Street was the name of the, the, the address of the vacant parcel uh, that was allowed to variances were granted to allow for the construction of a single family home. And if you, that is not directly across the street, but kitty corner across the street. And there's a very, very nice single family home that's almost finished right now that fits in with the neighborhood, fits in line with the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, we are proposing to do the same thing. And as I said, uh, we have uh, uh, off-street parking for the project and it would fit in line with the other properties. Uh, we are also going to commit to the recommendation of DPD. Uh, we're taking out some arbovites, which is on this lot that exists right now, that we will go ahead and, and add some shade trees that will be uh, aligned with the sidewalk. And they are also on the site plan and uh, uh, Matt Hammer can go over those with you and go through the site plan and show uh, and show where they're located on the on the lot. Uh, so uh, Matt, if you would like to go through the site plan right now uh, for the members of the board. Uh, thank you, Attorney, Attorney Theodoro. So um, the lot line that's proposed is, is essentially where the lot line exists between the two parcels as they stand today, uh, knowing that yes, they are merged, uh, but that lot line will remain where the lot line is of record. Um, what we've done is to position the proposed uh, dwelling on what is called parcel one, which if you're facing the existing uh, single family dwelling is to the right. What we've done is we've uh, maintained a side setback uh, for that proposed dwelling and also laid out the dwelling so that the driveway and the setback to the driveway will conform to zoning. And what we've 
done is, is we position the driveway uh, further away from the existing driveway to the existing house, which is if you look, if you're in front of the house, which is to the left of the house. So what we've done is uh, divided the dwelling and put the driveway on the opposite side. Um, with that location, it, it also afforded us to provide some drainage communication um, per the comments from the stormwater team. And we'll have a infiltration trench alongside the driveway as well as a subsurface drainage um, uh, underneath the driveway. Um, part of the uh, conditions or the recommendations from uh, DPD was to provide an operation and maintenance uh, for those drainage systems for the new property owner, which we'll most certainly do. Um, there's also going to be a, a deck in the rear of the pro rear of the dwelling, which will be five feet by twelve feet, as well as a front walkway coming from the driveway to the front entrance, and also making a connection from the front entrance to the sidewalk out front. We are also uh, proposing uh, some shade trees. Uh, we've put some uh, locations on the plan. Um, the plan does call for three. Uh, we'll be working with DPD to, to cite the third shade tree um, when that um, when it comes time to pull the building permit for the lot if this uh, variance is approved. And that's the, uh, uh, oh, additionally to that, is we'll be doing some improvements to the sidewalk for the new curb cut as well. Um, and we'll repair the existing curb cut in the required handicap ramp or a tra transition from the curbing to the, to the driveway as well on either side. And I can put it back to uh, Attorney Theodora. Thank you, Matt. Um, so uh, we're, you know, uh, available to answer any questions from the board or members of the public, uh, if they have any questions with respect to this project. Thank, thank you, Mr. Theodore, Mr. Hammer, for your um, narrative of the project. Um, now we're going to move into the public hearing portion of the hearing. Um, anyone wishing to speak in favor of this petition? In favor? In favor? Hearing none, that portion of public hearing is closed. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition? That that hearing of the public hearing is closed. Uh, now we'll, we'll move forward to comments, questions from the board. Um, the chair recognizes um, Mr. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, I um, I like the idea of um, filling this lot. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think that it really does support the um, architecture of that street. Um, the, the size of the structure is a, a bit large for the neighborhood, but um, it does seem to fit well on the site plan. However, there's a couple of things on the site plan that are missing that I'd like to make a condition that we complete. Um, actually, maybe not. It, it's, it's, Site plan is missing one element, and then the architecturals are indicating something that needs to be corrected. So the deck in the back of the structure on the architecturals indicates a 10-foot dimension, not a 5-foot dimension. I think the 5-foot dimension is more um, appropriate. And so I'd just like to understand, is the site plan correct or are the architecturals correct? Uh, the site plan is correct, Mr. McCarthy. So we would make we'd accept that as a condition for that deck to be five feet. Thank you. And then the element um, that's missing on the site plan that I've noticed is the um, rear uh, cellar access. So I think there's a bulkhead on these on the um, plan that's not indicated on the site plan. That's correct. Is that correct. Yep. So we could update the site plan to indicate the bulkhead in the back there. Yes. Um, and uh, and I think you mentioned it earlier that there's a third shade tree, but there are three shade trees indicated on the site plan already. 
So are, are you saying that there's a fourth shade tree? No, so let me clarify that, Mr. McCarthy. You may not have the most recent site plan in front of you because we had a typo on the location of a shade tree, which would have been to the left of the existing dwelling. Yeah. It's in the middle of the driveway. Which is in the middle of the driveway. So uh, we do make a mistake sometimes. That was a mistake that we noticed when we revised the plan to incorporate the drainage. Uh, but we don't want to just simply have two shade trees. We, you know, Because we proposed three, we want to make sure we include a third shade tree on this property project. And so are you suggesting that it be in front of the existing house, the third shade tree? Where are you suggesting? Yeah, we might put it in the back of the house. Um, you know, we could put one in the back rear left. I, I can see a location that would work there. Uh, we didn't or, have any other low. Yep, go ahead. Sorry. So, uh, you know, it, it's a congested area. I think that existing house has an awful lot of hardscape in front of it. And so I don't think we're going to get a shade tree in the front of that existing house. And then the other spot that I kind of was suggesting that maybe would make sense is to the um, to the west of the proposed driveway, but I don't know if there's enough room, especially up against that two and a half story multifamily. So um, I think we could make a condition that we get the third shade tree in the back uh, yard. I think I, I'm, I'm I'm just trying to play this out. If a shade tree is going to be significant, it needs to go somewhere. Um, the back um, of that of that proposed um, new house would be probably the only place I could see it going. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. I, I, the only place we could put that tree is in the back rear south um, easterly corner. Okay. And Why don't we try to target that then? I, I agree with you. Um, that that's probably, but I really like the idea of getting another shade tree back there just because um, they're they're in short supply in that neighborhood. So um, yep, I agree. I, I I agree with the analysis that was done as far as the um, lots in that neighborhood. You know, um, it's it's putting a lot on, on, on the street here, but we have off street parking provided for both properties. <clears throat> so I really see a lot of pluses to filling this lot in with a nice new significant house, three bedroom house, it's nicely designed. So um, I think that I can support this. Um, it, it's a lot of house, but I think it's probably the right house to have here. So. Um, uh, just that uh, condition to correct those borrowing pieces and uh, provide the shade tree location in the southeasterly side of the proposed new lot. So that's all I have, but thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Any comments? Uh, the, the chair recognizes Mr. Callahan. Uh, Mr. Callahan, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I agree with Dennis's uh, uh, comments, especially trying to. Get that third shade tree in there. I, I would do. I was going to suggest you just work with DPD to do it. But, um, if you want to, we want if we want to pick a location now. But I don't want to put this put you in a bind with Cameron. You know, say you can't do it if you try to do saying. I, I, my suggestion for the condition work with DPD. Uh, that's fine as as long as uh, fine with Mr. McCarthy as well. Yeah. Well, when Mr. McCarthy gets back, we'll ask him. Dennis, I was suggesting that we just work with PPD instead of having a location. Just have them. I just don't want to put them in a bind. Um, there, unfortunately, unfortunately, Sean, there really isn't a lot of options here other than the I know. back of the property. But um, I want to make sure that we don't force a shade tree on Abbott Street that won't survive well. So that's kind of why I wanted to try to direct DPD to locate something in the backyard because. Um, that that um, very large three and a half story multifamily there is yeah. not going to not going to support a shade tree next to it very easily. I understand. I'll just say work with DPD to have the shade tree located. Yep. Um, 
I, thanks for uh, I, the plans are like great. I'm like nice little layout. Now, first of all, I want to commend Jared too. While we're at it, he, he put on really great, Mr. Theodore. He put on really very well and well analyzed. Uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, I, I, I uh, thank Jared for his analysis. He did a very thorough uh, and detailed analysis. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah. Um, one thing that one thing that caught my eye though, I was looking at the uh, the floor plans. The first floor of the new building in, in uh, seven, there's this little bump out area that you got designated as a zero clearance fire. Like the first, first time I've seen, seen one of these uh, pop into a floor plan. What, what, what's, the, uh, what's the intention with that? Uh, we uh, were actually uh, quite common that there's no foundation underneath that fireplace. It's essentially a gas fireplace, so it's not a fully mortared uh, brick fireplace that would need a foundation that would need to go four feet below frost. I mean, to get the frost below the grade, which would essentially be a setback. So if it's so if it's if it's a zero clearance and it doesn't have the foundation that that's allowed uh, within the setback. And I but I've noticed that little bump up. So you get the wood. Uh, how tall is how tall is the uh, bump up like on that side on that right hand side? That doesn't go all the way up to the next. That's just like one story, right? No, that goes all the way up. Oh no, go, I'm sorry. It goes one story. Yes, you're correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and uh, obviously, if it's just a gas thing, I mean, it's going to be a working fireplace, uh, an exit or, or a, or an exhaust out, out of that, or the gas, yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I've seen, first time we've seen that on one of these, uh, these okay. I just want to verify that. that that's and I think it's, it's a, it's a nice detail to add for the homeowner to have that. Oh, I agree. Like, like I said, first time I've seen it, like, oh, that was, that was pretty cool. This is a this is a similar house, uh, Mr. Callahan, to the one we we did over on School Street. Oh yeah, okay. I don't remember seeing that that little school it was there. I guess it wasn't looking for it. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I think uh, I think it would be a great addition to the uh, neighborhood. Uh, I agree with Mr. Though I know the property is different, but you could do one somewhere down the street that is probably going to going to fit in. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Callahan, for your comments. Uh, the, the chair recognizes Mr. Procope. Mr. Procope, the floor is yours, sir. His mic is off. Thank you. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, so I, I have to say that uh, when I drove around, um, I, I was a little taken aback of how congested, you know, the, uh, you know, the street was, and I and I said to myself, like, how can how can you build another house? You know, next to this one, um, the 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 plot itself looked fine. You know, green space. But after listening to to you tonight, and 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 again, I was looking at the floor plan again. It it seems like it's it's not a bad uh, bad plan, and it, it is conducive to that neighborhood. Um, you know, because I, I myself was thinking, is a driveway will be big enough, and are you going to only fit a VW bug in there? But I think I think it it will make the neighborhood look a little bit better. So I don't have any questions I, other than what was previously mentioned by the board. Thank thank you, Mr. Procol, for your comments, sir. Um, the, the chair recognizes Mr. Breer. Mr. Breer, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mac for yes speaking. I like um, Attorney Theodoros had recall of the previous uh, Abbott Street petition. So I uh, I was on, on the drive over for my site visit. I, I, I thought this would work, and, and what I found was uh, it, it will work. That the um, the requested parcels uh, they're 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 more than comparable to the others in the neighborhood. 
And uh, as a result, I, I, I think it's a good project and I'm gonna vote in favor. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Breer, for your comments, sir. Um, you know, I think, again, this is, this is the impact. Uh, again, I, I agree with my colleagues. Um, you know, this, this position, to me, it makes sense. Um, it seems like a, a lot of um, kind of, lot of surface when you first look at it, but, you know, the, the unmerging or the splitting of the, uh, of the lots, you know, it, it really does conform or fit in and uh, it, it kind of fit in spatially with, with this neighborhood, I, I think. So overall, I think, uh, I think you you met the, the requirements um, for for a variance, and I think uh, you know I can also vote in favor of this decision as well. Um, so, so, Mr. Theodoro, Attorney Theodoro, uh, you heard the comments and the and the wish of the board, um, along with those conditions as mentioned earlier. Uh, hearing all of that, sir, would, would you like to move forward with a vote tonight for your petition? Yeah. Yes, sir. We would. We would uh, we would like uh, request a vote on the petition uh, tonight, with uh, okay. with the conditions that were suggested by the board members. Great, thank thank you, Mr. Attorney Theodore. Um, so, hearing that, can we have a motion on the petition, please? Yeah, I just want to double check the conditions, Attorney Theodoro, and Dennis. Correct if I'm missing something. I have uh, the deck in the rear of Seven Avenue Street cannot exceed five feet, and. Uh, Work with DPD on location of third shade tree at Seven Abbott Street in the backyard. And we also have the correction of the um, bulkhead that's missing on the site plan. Oh, yeah. It's your new site plan for correction of bulkhead. Attorney Theodore, you're, you're agreeing with those conditions as yes, mentioned by the. Yes, I, yes, I do. Thank, thank you, sir. Um, so I guess we, we can move forward with a with a motion now, um, Mr. Callahan. Thank you, so, Mr. Chairman. Like to make a motion. So we're doing. We have a. You need a variant and a special permit, correct, right, Attorney Theodore? Uh, there's a there's a, a a variance to unmerge the lots to allow for the. Uh, the 11 Abbott Street to exist as a uh, uh, pre-existing non-conforming. Uh, there's also uh, variance for lot area, lot area per unit, frontage, side yard setback, and rear yard setback for um, uh, 7 Abbott Street, as well as a special permit for use for 7 Abbott Street for the reason that that is located in a TMU zone, and in order for it strictly to exist as a residential dwelling unit, you need a special permit for use. So we're doing two, so we have two, two, two votes, one for the special permit and one for the variance. Let's start with a special permit. That's right. uh, Perfect. So three, Thank Mr. you, Mr. Chairman. Three, Mr. Chairman, would like to make a motion on DB 2020-40 for 7 Abbott Street for a special permit approval under section 12.1A uh, to unmerge the lot uh, 7 Abbott Street from 11 Abbott Street to con and construct a new single family dwelling at 7 Abbott Street. With the previously mentioned conditions. Thank, thank you, Mr. Callahan. Motion by Mr. Callahan, second by? George Prokop seconds. Uh, mem member Prokop seconds the motion. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, approval conditions. Member Callahan. Approval conditions. Member McCarthy. Approve with conditions. Member Breer. Approve with conditions. Member Procope. Approve with conditions. All right, Mr. Theodore, your your first um, petition for the variance has been approved. Um, we're going to go on to the special permit uh, very special permit uh, vote variance. now. Variance. That was a special permit. Oh, excuse me. Strike that. Excuse me. The special permit has been approved. Now we're going to go on to the, the variance vote. Thank, thank you, Mr. Collins. Welcome. Uh, first, I'd like to make a motion on DB 2020-40 for 7-11 Abbott Street for variance approval. Both lots for Section 5.1 lot area for dwelling unit. Minimum frontage, front yard setback, side yard setback, rear yard setback. To unmerge lots 7-11 Abbott Street and 7 
All right, motion by Mr. Callahan, second by with the previous match, previously mentioned the game. Uh, um, so second by, I heard Mr. Breer, um, give him a roll call, please. Vice Chairman Peck. Uh, approve the conditions. Member Callahan. Approve the conditions. Member McCarthy. Approve the conditions. Member Breer. Approve the conditions. Member Provo. Approve with conditions. All right, congratulations, Mr. Theodore. You've been approved uh, of your parents and all your petition tonight. We wish you the best of luck. So thank, thank you for being patient and, and waiting and going through. No, all thank, and, thank you to members of the board for all of your patience and taking on all these positions, uh, the petitions to the end, and everybody have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank, 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 you, thank you. You as well, sir. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you, Mr. Hammer, as well. Thank you, sir, for your patience. Yes, thank All right, you. Move, moving forward. Thank you. Uh, moving forward under other business, um, we have the minutes for September 14, 2020 for approval. Um, any any comments, questions, or or edits to the, the minutes for September 14 by any board members? Hearing none. Um, can we have a motion to approve the minutes for September 14, 2020? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for September 14. Motion by Mr. Callahan to approve the minutes. Second by hey, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second the motion. Second by Mr. McCarthy. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any approved, say nay. All right, the ayes have it, the minutes have been approved. Um, if there's no other comments or questions, um, we'll, we'll move to adjourn the meeting for tonight. I just had a question to Fran. I thought, what, were we going to do the calendar for 2021 today or that? Um, let me think. I think that was on the agenda for the next meeting. The first meeting in October for you guys. Okay, no, I noticed. You provided us the, the calendar. I just didn't know if that was. Thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clark, and, and thank you, uh, Ms. Liana, for that too as well. Um, hearing no other questions or comments, we'll, we'll move to a motion to adjourn the meeting for tonight. Um, Mr. Clark, you, you can make a motion to adjourn, sir. Are you, Mr. Chairman? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second by. I'd like to second the motion. Uh, second the motion by Mr. Park to adjourn. All in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, the ayes have it. Thank you all again. Ha have a good night. Meeting is adjourned. You thank too. you for all your patience. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night.